Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And people always ask Adam and I, they're like, hey, my machine doesn't have that much memory, but we have a lot of data. And we've been getting these out of memory exceptions or we don't think we can pull all the data down on our desktop when we're working locally. How do we limit the data in the desktop, but when we deploy it to the service, remove that limit? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you. Stay tuned. If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Okay, got a lot of data in my source. I need to work with a subset of that data locally. When I deploy it out to the service, we want to pull in all the data. How do you do it? It's actually quite simple. And in this video, I'm going to show you. But before I do, big shout out to the two Alexes, Alex P, Alex Powers, hey Adam, and Alex D and Gilbert Q because this all kind of originated from them and we're out at SQL Bits. One of them brought it up and I was like, oh, that'll be a good video. We should show people how to do that. And so here I am. So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Let's say I'm here in the query editor and I've loaded some data from AdventureWorks and you can see I have my internet sales table. There's lots of data here, but I can't click close and apply because maybe I get an out of memory exception or I just want to work with the smallest set of data because it takes too long to load. And I don't have premium or premium per user, so I don't have the XML endpoint. I can't switch out filters and no, there's really no reason for me to use incremental refresh. How do I limit it here in the desktop, but then remove that limit when I go to the server? So let me show you. The first thing you're gonna do is click on that big table. You probably can think of 10 million ways to do this, but the way that they were showing me was keep rows, and then you specify how much you wanna keep. So you can see right here, I have 100,000 rows. So you can decide how many you wanna keep. I'm gonna stick with 100,000, I'm gonna click okay. And then what you do is you create a parameter. We're gonna call this all or small. And we're gonna set this to A, change the data type to text. And accept all the other defaults. I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm gonna go back over to my internet sales and I'm gonna to go to the advanced editor. Inside the advanced editor, I'm gonna add a step. Really simple, call it rows to return equals. If all or small is equal to A, then DBO else kept first rows. So return rows, if all the small equals A, then return this, else return the smallest set of data. And then go right here and say rows to return. Let's just kind of recap what I've done. So I have two sets. I return all the data here. I filter the data down to the top 1000 here. And then in this row, I do a little logic to say, if that parameter value is A, return everything. Otherwise, return my small set of data. Now you can adjust this to feature needs. And then what I've done is I've modified the output and Instead of keep first rows, the output is that last step that I added. Then I click done. Watch this when I click close and apply. See what happens. Tick, 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 tick. It's going after all of the data, and that's because of the value I set. So if my parameter value is set to A, it's going to return all. If my parameter value is set to something besides A, it's only going to return the 100,000. So now in the desktop, you can see that it returned all 611,000 rows. If you want to test this, you can go to transform, choose edit parameters, and set this to anything but A. Let's choose S and click OK. When I click apply, it should change to 100,000 rows. So now I'm going to save this and I'll publish this out to the service. And now what I'm going to show you once this publishes, how you can go out in the workspace and quickly adjust this so that the data that's returned is all the data instead of the subset of the data. So we're going to head out to the service and you'll see right now when the report loads that it only has 100,000 rows. We're going to go to my workspace. We're going to go to data sets. Let's sort this by the one that was last refresh. There's my limit rows. What I'm going to do is go into schedule refresh. There's going to be a section down here for parameters. So right now it's set to S. I'm going to change it to A because I want all. Once I set it to A, I'm going to head back over to my workspace, go find that data set, and then I'm to refresh it. It'll take a little bit for this to refresh. Shouldn't take too long. It's only 600,000 rows. So now the refresh finished. Didn't take too long to refresh. I'm going to head back over to the report. Let's find the report. There we go. Let's open up the report. And now instead of 100,000 rows, it returns 611,000 rows. In the desktop, you can work with this small amount of data in your data model, make changes. And then when you publish it out to the service, you go over to the settings for that particular data set, switch that value to whatever is going to give you all the data and then run the refresh. And then you get, you get all the data. It's just that simple. All right. What do you guys think? Have you done this before? I bet you a lot of you guys have seen this before. Maybe again, I'm late to the party, but I thought it'd be a cool video, especially for people that are getting, just getting started with Power BI. If you have any questions, comments, let's continue the conversation where? in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. 
see you in the next video.